With that engagement, that happens. Without that engagement, mm -hmm. that happens. I have them hanging in the back of the barn on chains. And so I push them and then they come back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put more weight on them and, a, and an elastic so they'll come back fast. Mm -hmm. but right now, I'm just walking between these, these two things. And as I'm doing that, I'm noticing that as I do it, okay, if I let it go, then I'm kind of like swimming between these two things, mm -hmm. which is a really nice feeling. So you're punching, yeah. right? So it's coming in and I'm feeling that and I know that I can just do that. But that's not interesting enough. Right. What is, would be interesting is from here to, to be able to feel this and then somehow be the wave that comes back as opposed to being just like sliding. Mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's, a, and there's a deep engagement that when, when, I, when you do that, whatever you do, that even from here, I should be able to bring up this wave and do this. And I'm not... I can't quite get the, as soon as you have a lighter, mm -hmm. and it just, you can't quite get the flame. I feel like I can, I'm, I'm that close to feeling it, but I can't, I can't get the. As soon as you realize that the candlelight is fire, the dinner was cooked a long time ago. There was a theory when they thought that light was something that came out of your eyes. And they thought that light came out of your eyes and went out and detected what was out there. This notion that your eyes don't do anything that they just receive was a breakthrough. So this internal style, mm -hmm. this afferent style, mm -hmm. this centripetal engagement, this ability to receive things into the ground instead of going out there to get it. Mm -hmm. you know, when people, and at a very basic level, when people are learning to defend themselves, they go out there to try to stop whatever's coming in right. and they forget what they're defending. It's like a country that spends all of its money on its military to defend its way of life and doesn't have a way of life worth defending. Right. So unless you're actually, if you, and if you build a way of life that's worth defending, you are less likely to be endangered. Mm -hmm. You're more likely to be emulated than attacked. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, a well-managed defense includes an integrative strategy that includes everybody else, not just the people within your boundaries, but includes the security of the people outside. Mm -hmm. You are safer from your neighbors if your neighbors are happy. Right. Community survives on the well-being of its, of, of its residents. Mm -hmm. uh, the world survives on the well-being of, of all of it. So the problems with immigration and so on, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we've mismanaged our relationships mm -hmm. with the world, with the earth, we've got droughts and fires and wars and things happening, and unless we solve those problems. Like the Marshall Plan after World War II was a brilliant idea. It's a way of keeping all of the poor and the dispossessed where they are. Right. By, you know, because if you don't, they're all going to want to come to where you are, so if you just send them money, you get to keep them on that side of the, the yeah. Atlantic. So that was part of it, but it's also a good integrative strategy. Mm -hmm. So integrating that notion of uh, in combat between uh, what you are trying to defend and uh, trying to do something to the other person. That's the distributive approach okay. you know, to negotiation. That's where uh, I have the thing that I have that I want to defend and I want to defend it against that so I have to take the power away from that in order to have the power here. And as you started to find out that attacking me does not defend you. Mm -hmm. But when, so when I attack and you attack the attack, you're just attacking. If you attack the attack, you resist against it the way you used to, yeah. then you are just adding power to my attack. Right. And whoever is the most jang or in the strongest position causes more damage. So you increase the amount of damage that's caused to you by resisting against it. Mm -hmm. But when you just respond naturally to the intent, mm -hmm. you've already responded. And you've started to take, um, shall we say, an integrative uh, awareness so you're integrating your awareness of yourself to include me. Mm -hmm. So that as I form an attack, as I form the thought of an attack, mm -hmm. the idea of an attack, because you are connecting to me as much as you are to yourself, mm -hmm. then you become aware of the attack before it, before it forms, before it manifests. Mm -hmm. So the first level of defense, you get hit and you don't know what happened. Then you get hit and you know what happened. And then you see it coming and you try to not let it happen but it still happens. Mm -hmm. And then you see it and you block and then you stop that thing, but then the next thing hits you. Mm -hmm. And then you start to block and counter. 
and then it's a back and forth. Then it's a um, simultaneous defend and attack. Mm -hmm. Then it's intercepting. And intercepting is where real martial arts happens, mm -hmm. where you are learning to intercept the other person's intent so that when I go to move, you've already intercepted it. And that's why you know, I can stand here and I can try to do that, but you've already been there. Mm -hmm. You've already blocked it. So I try to surprise you, and mm -hmm. you, were, you know, boom, there. I almost got you there. That's something. But uh, so from here, you move before I do, but you don't move unless I do. Right. You only move if I move, but you move before I move. So I'm here, I'm trying to be neutral, I'm trying not to make it seem like I'm attacking, and you just say, well, enough of that. We watch the video. You can tell he attacked me first, mm -hmm. but I d you didn't. There comes a point, of course, it becomes a legal matter where you try to, you have to make it clear to the external observer sometimes who moved first. So, so are you saying then, so when, when you, you, so my, my thinking that I should be able to do this mm -hmm. is coming from a place where I'm not just letting it happen. Right. You lose that centripetal engagement, you lose that afferent power when you try to go out and control the other at the cost to yourself. When you start to see yourself as being different from me, then you get into that distributive model of negotiating. Okay. When you see yourself as dependent on me and of me dependent on you, as the relationship between us now, it's not, it's not me versus you, it's now a relationship. It's our relationship that you're trying to defend, the harmony of that relationship, rather than defending yourself against me at the cost to our relationship. So when I attack, you, let's see there, that was that you were pensive, so you were thinking yeah. outside of the experience. But if you engage, mm -hmm. then you are maintaining the relationship. I sometimes call it the, the Conan the librarian approach. Yeah, who's there, totally in charge of everything, but people are creating a problem. They go, thanks for sharing. Now you go sit over there and be quiet. Mm -hmm. And, oh, that's very good information. Now you, can you say that a little more quietly? Mm -hmm. So, or, or in improvisational theater, the yes and instead of the no but. Mm -hmm. So when you push from here, if I try to resist against you, if I brace against you, I give you something to push against. Right. And I separate it from the ground. So I have this efferent power that's coming out so that as you push me, you're pushing me to push mm -hmm. there, and I'm giving you something to push against. Right. I'll give you something to push against. Whereas if you push, mm -hmm. and I have that afferent mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. now you're pushing, and I'm, you push as hard as you yeah. want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not changing anything externally. All I'm doing is changing the way that my mind engages this relationship. That changes the internal structure and the internal dynamic. So that wave that you're trying to create should already have been there. And if I'm trying to create it, I'm not going to create it. That's right. You're not going to create it because you're in the wrong moment in, in time. Okay. You're, you're trying to you know, control the past or the future. But if, you, if the wave is already there, it's a continuous thing. Think of it as gravitational waves. Okay. You want to distort space-time. Okay. You want to uh, change the nature of the universe, including yourself, in the moment. Right? Not, you're, not, you're not moving another point in space-time. You are in this point in space-time. When I push you and you neutralize, you are neut it's you neutralizing me. Right. That is an incomplete way that you're not truly intercepting. If you, have a, if you still have that division, that separation between you and me. If you sink into that spot, you open up the heart, you relax the kidneys, and you make that connection to the ground, then that wave has already happened. See that? Got it. So with that engagement, that happens. Without that engagement, mm -hmm. that happens. Okay. So if I push you and, you and you are just separate from me, you are reinforcing the separation and thereby giving me something else to push right. against. But if you connect to the ground, then it's pushing on itself. It's like the cartoons where the guy, the, the character grabs the doorknob and puts both feet on the door and pulls. Yeah. That's, that's what happens when we tense up. Right. So if you have that afferent engagement, and the, so there's a difference between bracing mm -hmm. and centripetal engagement. So there was a bit of bracing there when you did that yeah, yeah. because you weren't already there. If you're not already there, if you're not already connected to the ground, then the effort to connect yourself to the ground is basically trying to pull all the bits of the boat together to keep it from sinking. If the boat is not assembled, 
-hmm. then as soon as the water comes along up onto the beach, the boat's not going to float. Right. And it's too late to start assembling the boat right. when the water's there. Right. So there. Yeah. So if you have that afferent connection, that engagement, so you get there, then that happens. Mm -hmm. And, and even, if you, there, even if you didn't use your arms mm -hmm. at that point, I would have bounced a little. I would have moved you a little, but it, because you engage the whole thing, the whole thing changes shape. So it's not just the shape of the thing. It's not just the internal engagement. It's the way that that internal engagement informs the shape. And the shape conforms to the necessities of that moment in space-time. Got it. So when I punch your nose. That makes sense. You're already there. That makes sense. It's so it's like saying I'm trying to catch myself meditating. Yes. You do. So I have to give up the idea that I can now do something. Right. Where it, so if I just if I just do nothing, then if if it's not if it's not meant to happen in that moment, mm -hmm. I can't make it happen. Right. And it can only happen based on what you do relative to who I am at that time. Right. Okay. Which is a bummer. Yeah. <laughs>